to proofs in your life today. Yeah. Father, thank you for proving yourself in our midst today. Jesus, thank you for proving to us today with undeniable proofs that you are alive. Receive our thanks in the name of Jesus. Amen. Open us up by your word to our next levels. Amen. Take all the praise Amen. in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Happy, happy Easter to every worshiper this morning. And many, many happy returns. No one's life shall be cut short. Death has lost its power over your life. Yeah. Death has lost its power over your family. Yeah. It has lost its power over your children. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. For he said, oh death, where is your victory? Where is your sting and no oh grave? Where is your power? Death has lost its thing. The grave has lost its power over your life. Amen. Everyone appointed to death finally escapes today. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Give the Lord a big hand of praise and please, you may be comfortably seated. We have um, the power of God in levels. And we saw that from scriptures in Ezekiel 47 and verse 1 to 5. There was water Israel fought from the right side where Jesus is seated. When I go, I will send him to you. So he's sending rivers of living water. And the angel that talked with me took a line and measured a thousand cubits. It was to my ankle. And then another thousand cubits. It was to my knees. Another thousand cubits. It was to my waist. Then another thousand cubits. It was a river that could not be passed over. That's talking about empowerment of the spirit as in levels the ankle deep level the knee deep level the waist deep level and the level of the river that cannot be passed over they receive power on the day of Pentecost and then in chapter 4 of Acts they receive great power with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of Christ and great grace was upon them. And then we saw exceeding great power that as you understand we be enlightened as you may know the riches of his glory and the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe according to his mighty power which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him upon his right hand on high and that exceeding great power is all graduates to the powers of the world to come As we grow in it. That is living the reality of heaven on the earth. Bringing heaven down to the earth.
The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. 1 Corinthians 15, 26. That's the stronghold of the devil. But before Jesus returns, death will be humiliated. And that will happen by encounters with the power of his resurrection. So we're looking at briefly today understanding the power of his resurrection. What is it all about? And what does it offer? Understanding the power of his resurrection. Paul said that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. Philippians 3.10 It's important for us to know that we encounter the power of his resurrection principally through revelation. Ephesians 1 and verse 18 to 22 the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that he may know what is the hope of his calling and what is the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us what who believe according to the working of his mighty power which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him on his own right hand in the heavenly places Far above for principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named not only in this world but also in that which is to come. Now, verse 22 and has put all things under his feet and given to be head over all things to the church. Now, 23 which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. So the power of his resurrection puts all things under his feet. And it's for the church. So the church can begin to manifest and operate in dominion. All things. That he may know the exceeding greatness of his power. So it's not what you pray and fast for is what is unveiled to you that you may know. The secret things belong to God but the things that are revealed they belong to us and to our seed after us. It will be 29 verse 29 that he may know. So it just opens to you the treasure hold of his power. And this is why the first miracle that Jesus performed after he rose from the dead was an eye-opening miracle that is taking away the veil cast upon the hearts of men. Matthew 27, verse 51 and 52. We saw this drama two place when Jesus gave, the, gave up the ghost, behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom, and the earth did quake, and the rocks rent. The veil that separated the holiest of all from the congregation was torn in twain. It's important to know what is in that place from Hebrews chapter 9. Behind that veil, we have the rod of Aaron that bought it. Amen. Everything comes alive there. We have the golden pot that has manna inside. Praise God. Golden supplies at will. We have the tables of the covenant that unveils to you and I 
what we must do to commit God to make good his promise. They are all behind that veil. Jesus, when he gave up the ghost, the veil in the temple was torn in twain. And when he came out, we saw him with those two disciples on the way to Emos. Their eyes were holding that they should not know him. Then he served them the communion and their eyes were open and they knew him. Eye opening miracle. Eye opening miracles. Then hope did the understanding that they might understand the scriptures in the same chapter. Eye opening miracles. Eye opening miracles. Then opened he their eyes, verse 45, that they might understand the scriptures. So, the opening of our eyes is the gateway to encountering the power of his resurrection. And that's why Paul was praying for the Ephesian church that the eyes of your understanding may be enlightened. Amen. Ephesians 1 and verse 17 and 18. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened that ye may know the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe. So it takes an eye-opening experience to step into the realm of the resurrection power. Very crucial. With our access to revelation, we encounter the power of his resurrection, which continues to change our story from glory to glory. He's risen. And he rose to open your eyes and my eyes. So we can begin to experience 2 Corinthians 3, 18. As we behold him with open eyes, <laughs> as in a glass, man, we are changed from glory to glory into the same image. As by the Spirit of the Lord. We behold him with open eyes, open face. So the face has to be open. The eyes have to be open for you and I to step into that realm or from glory to glory. And that's one big offer of resurrection the opening of our spiritual eye of understanding so we can step into that realm of from glory to glory. He said, Arise and shine when your light comes and the glory of the Lord shall be risen upon thee <laughs> and behold the darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people but the Lord shall arise upon thee and the glory shall be seen upon thee and the Gentiles shall come to your light and their kings to the presence of your rise. And among the blessings there, who are these are fly as a cloud. So you live where you used to be. And then, verse 15, although you have, whereas thou hast been forsaken and hated, and that no man went through thee, I will make thee by that encounter an eternal excellency and the joy of many generations. Then he said, And a little one among you shall become a thousand, and a small one a strong nation. I, the Lord, will hasten it in his time. That's the offer of resurrection that has no other way of assessing. It offers you an eye-opening package. So you can begin to experience from glory to glory experience in your walk with God. Now, what is in the power of his resurrection for us? We understand from scriptures that the power of resurrection is ordained 
to provoke our supernatural change of story in all areas of life. In all areas of life. In all areas of life. <laughs> the Bible said, as he is in heaven, so are we now in this world. Praise God. He wants, us to break, he wants to bring us to the same place with him. He had in our Lord made perfect that we may have boldness in the day of judgment because as he is, so are we in this world. So what that, whatever can molest him in his present status is not permitted to molest you. And so today, you are returning in your new resurrected status. <laughs> We saw some detailed description of what resurrection offers in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And we saw the products of it in Revelation chapter 5 verse 12. He died and came out of the grave and obtained for us, what is it? Power. Revelation 5 12. Riches, wisdom, strength, glory honor and blessings. Now, what remains? That's all that make for life and godliness. They are the products of the power of resurrection for the believer. Towards us who believe. Resurrection power only delivers to believers, not to the multitude. That's why you need to be sure of your stand in God and not appropriate salvation but have a vivid experience of new birth. Because this sevenfold offer in Revelation 5.12 only pertains to the believers. Resurrection power only pertains to us who believe. Now let's go down to specifics. What does resurrection power offer us as believers. Number one, it empowers us to walk in the newness of life. First Corinthians 15, 42 empowers us to walk in the newness of life. So is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption it is raised in incorruption. Romans 6 14, the Bible said, Therefore, as we are buried with him by baptism unto death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in the newness of life. So every unwanted habit of your life gets off you this morning. <laughs> By the power of his resurrection, everything that corrupts and defies drops off your life today. Yeah. So in a corruption, I mean in corruption, but raised in incorruption, buried with him in baptism unto death, so we can be raised together with him to walk in the newness of life. Now, between now and the next Easter, your spiritual life will become a surprise to yourself. <laughs> Every junk habit that's contesting with your glorious destiny must drop off your life today. And I decree that by the power of his resurrection. Amen. Be free. Yeah. If anyone has any concern, now let's be specific. Note it right now in your note. And say this is crushed finally by the power of his resurrection. I take cover under the resurrection power. 
to take delivery of my liberty from this deadly habit that's making my life miserable. Amen. So, you don't just look at me. Take steps. Whatever you don't want, you don't watch. Whatever you don't resist has a right to remain. And whatever you won't confront, you cannot conquer. No double dealing gives you a place with God. <laughs> Amen. Amen. You watch all those high flyers. In Bible days, they were men and women that operated with the fear of God as their lifestyle. The fear of God was their lifestyle. They were not there in the realm of corruption. They could not find one thing wrong with Daniel sir, yes, sir. as a public leader. Joseph, a man that feared God. Therefore, I cause everything that corrupts operating in anyone's life by the power of resurrection this morning. Jesus caused the fig tree and it dried off from the roots. Therefore, everyone's taste for every form of ungodliness is caused by the power of resurrection this morning. I decree a new work in the newness of life for everyone in this service in the name of Jesus. You believe that? Let me hear your loudest. Amen. Yeah. Number two, offer of resurrection power. It eradicates shame and reproach. Eradicates what? It was obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. He rose from the dead and God has highly exalted him, giving him a name above every name that at the name of Jesus every day should bow. It was a three day of reproach and eternal restoration of glory. Eternal, 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 eternal resurrection or restoration of glory. Now <laughs> you talk about eternal excellency. Seated far above. At his name, every day bows of things on earth, things in heaven, and things on earth in the heaven. Everything bows. Resurrection power eradicates shame and reproach. First Corinthians 15 and verse 43. Sown in dishonor, raised in glory. <laughs> Sown in dishonor, they spat on his face. They pierce his side with a sword. They press a crown of thorns on his head. Man, they gave him vinegar to, vinegar to drink. Only three days. <laughs> and now, step into eternal glory. Therefore, today, everything that connotes shame and reproach in anyone's life, in anyone's family, over anyone's children, whatever connotes shame and reproach is rooted out of your life today. <laughs> Sown in this honor, raised in glory. Thank you, Jesus. And now he has called us to glory and virtue. Now he obtained for us glory. Revelation 5, 12. So we don't have to go through the shame and reproach he went through anymore. Between now and next Easter, you are singing your songs of glory. God is overturning every issue of shame in your life from the root. Yeah. 
He went to the grave in dishonor. He rose from the grave into eternal glory. Your hour has finally come. Yeah. All you need, sir, is to remain dedicated to God. He said, the hour that the son of man should be glorified has come. But except a corn of wheat falls to the ground and dies, that by his alone. But if he dies, it will bring forth much fruit. If any man loves himself, he will lose it. Lost his life, he will lose it. But whosoever serves me, according to this law of dedication, him will my father honor. Stay dedicated. Shame will disappear eternally. Amen. Just stay dedicated to this resurrected Christ. He has paid the price to eliminate shame and reproach in your life, and you never see them anymore. Amen. That shall be your experience. Amen. Number three. The resurrection power empowers us to work in the supernatural. First Corinthians 15 and verse 44. It's sown a natural body, but raised a spiritual body. There's a natural body, there's a spiritual body. Now, listen. <laughs> Not everybody you see on the street is a human being. You better know that. Some are highly demonized. Others are highly divinized. Some are highly demonized. Others are highly divinized. They work in the fullness of the stature of Christ. They wear Christ as their clothes. They don't see their short height. They see the almighty Christ. All over them. Resurrection power enables believers to operate naturally in the supernatural. Naturally in the supernatural. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 6. He has raised us up together with him and made us to seek together with him in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That's where resurrection has repositioned you. And whatever is from above is above all. That is the realm from where you are operating. So you command the supernatural at will with that understanding. And where you are seated is said to be far above in Ephesians 1 20 to 22, far above all principalities and powers. And every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. Many years ago, I got hold of a highly demonized lady who confessed to tormenting his entire family. Brought them, granted them. He was a commander of boards. Boards will just come into the house. They will call her, your boards have come. She tortured them. She tormented them. I was so grieved. So I got her into the vehicle, took one of my associates with me, and drove off to a no man's land. He said, where are we going? He said, just follow. <laughs> so I saw a pathway that branches off the main road. So I, I called in there. I've never been there in my life. I said, now, you brutal witch, whatever I tell you to do, begin to do it now. Lay down flat with your face to the ground. Stand up. Lay on your back with your face up. Now stand up. Walk down to that stream now. He said, if I walk, I would die. He said, die. Die now. 
Amen. So I now ask him, I think the devil is called the prince of the power, is the power of darkness. Why can't he come here to help you? He said, as long as you are here, he cannot come. How many have heard me share that told you before? As long as you are here, he cannot come. That was 1983. 19 what? So it's not about age. It's about light. It's about light. As long as you are here, he cannot come. Today he's born again, he's saved. But it was a terrible terror. It was a terror to the family. Amen. There's no point saying more to that. But it was terrible. He literally granted him and confessed to it. There are places the devil can go. That's where this power, as he positioned us, can go there. The great man, T.L. Osborne, went to our home in Tulsa during the time of my wife's, the attack on my wife's health, and said, he saw in a vision, the devil came on that street, and some demons were there with him, and the demon was trying to enter the house. The devil said, hey, stop that! I want you not to get there. He said, while the devil was busy doing some other things, another demon was trying to enter, he said, stop, I warned you! He said, this attack will come twice, but they will lose out. Amen. Satan is warning his demons. Don't go near. That's your new status in Christ. Because you are far about any reaction from you will be to their destruction. You are far about. Please, don't. Don't fake this thing. No. Please, I beg. Don't fake this thing. Don't fake. Don't ever fake this thing. It's so real. It's so tangible. You just need to reposition your system to line up. Lord, help me to know the power of your resurrection. And let me experience its diverse manifestations in my life. It empowers you and I to operate in the supernatural naturally. I told you the story many times how that I made an altar call after I had this encounter. It was a resurrection encounter. How many of you are witches here? They stood up. What do you do with the devil? One of them, I called them out. Called her out. She told me that anytime they want to suck blood, they get on the highways, cause the vehicle to suck my sword and suck the blood of the victim. I said, what of when people like us are coming? 1979. 19 what? He said, when we sense a higher power on the way, we clear up the highway. From today, evil will be clearing the way for you. The devil has no respect for grammar. Let me be clapping for you. He will not be laughing. He only respects power. Thou through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemy submit themselves to you. Greatness of power. Great wars are cheap. And this power is by revelation. He unveils it to you. You see yourself in that new position. You begin to manifest from that realm. From now, the supernatural will keep answering to you supernaturally. <laughs> Number four, it quickens our mortal body for health and vitality. First Corinthians 15, 44 and 45. So on a natural body, raised a spiritual body. There's a natural body and there's a spiritual body. And so it's written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul, but the last Adam was made a quickening spirit. And then we saw in verse 43, that it was sown in weakness, but raised in power. Now, in Romans 8, 11, if the spirit that raised Christ from the dead is in you, he that raised Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal body by his spirit we dwell in you. So, resurrection power quickens our physical system 
for health and vitality. Quickens our physical system for health and vitality. Quickens our physical system for health and vitality. With the resurrected Christ in you, your body is not permitted to suffer molestation. Amen. Amen. With your consciousness of that product, that offer, you are declared free finally today. No more weakness. No more feebleness. In the name of Jesus. No more weakness. No more feebleness. In the name of Jesus. This is very vital. So we are entitled to health and vitality through the manifestation of his resurrection power. Now, between now and next Easter, no sickness will be identified with you. Sickness and disease shall not have a foothold in your family. No one here will spend one night in any hospital. Number five, resurrection power empowers us to work in financial prosperity. Remember 2 Corinthians 8, 9. The Bible said, you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, even though he was rich, yet for your sake and my sake he became poor, that with poverty might be made rich. He came down to enrich us not in us. He came to enrich us, not to make us paupers. Now, Revelation 5, 12, he obtained for us power, riches, wisdom, glory, honor, blessings. So, <laughs> Jesus obtained for us from the dead. When they came out from the dead, among the sevenfold blessings, he received for us his riches, riches, riches. And what a joy. This month is a month of financial prosperity. It will open your eyes to see your place in his prosperity agenda. My God will open your eyes to see your place in his prosperity agenda. My God, who is also your God, will open your eyes. He opened my eyes to see what he showed me was not in the books I was reading. He came down, opened my eyes, I saw and I screamed, Yay, I can never be poor. 1982, I had no bank account. Man, I stepped into his agenda of financial fortune practically. Banks are not like you have it today. You just uh, be using telephone to bank. You go there practically. Praise God. <laughs> and if you are not sure of how much money you will need when you go there, you just keep your money in your hand. <laughs> and be spending it as you go. Praise God. Amen. Amen. But he showed me. He showed me when there was nothing. He showed me the abundance that he has in stock for me. He showed me how to get there. All my enemies know I'm blessed. Yes, sir. All of them. Yes, sir. I mean, the blessing is tormenting them wherever they are. They know what kind of man is this. Don't mind them, it's printing money. Go and buy a machine. Printing machine is not that costly. Go and buy. This is one of the most blessed churches in the world. He opened my eyes. Hallelujah. Amen. He opened my eyes. He opened my eyes. The same Christ that opened my eyes and has kept it open till now yes, yes. will open your eyes this time. Yes. He will open your eyes this time. Hey. Yes. Thank you, 
It will open your eyes this time. Thank you, Jesus. And as you open your eyes, may you receive the grace to follow. A minister of the gospel once asked me, Sir, what is the secret behind the prosperity of this uh, ministry? I said, you won't like it if I tell you. He said, I'm a man of my... I mean, I, I, I would, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a man. I would like it. I said, let me warn you, you won't like it. <laughs> he came and met me at Covenant University. We were doing a phase two construction of phase three, whichever. <laughs> and I asked him a simple question. Does your church pay tight? I said, I warned you before. I warned you. No, there are some questions people ask. They are not ready for the answer. One young man asked Jesus, what shall I do to inherit his eternal life? He said, keep the commands. Yeah, I've been keeping all of them. All that you mentioned, I've He said, one thing thou lackest. He said, all that you have. Ah. Keep your eternal life. I don't want <laughs> I don't want your eternal life. <laughs> Amen. Until you are ready to do his commandments, mm. you can never be in command. Yes, Amen. Mm. <laughs> you can never be in command. So, I gained command of finance. Mm. I saw it demonstrated in the building of this sanctuary, the faith tabernacle. They will need 80 million this week and no announcement to anybody. Carry on. Amen. Amen. As they are supplying, the sources are coming. Are coming. No announcement. No pledge. No nothing. Psh, psh. We need 120 million. Go ahead. Place order. <laughs> hey Amen. What kind of man is it? I never told anybody what was in the account. Yes, sir. Only the accountant myself knew. <laughs> Amen. Because if I told them, they will. I mean, excuse me, sir. I think it's better to move this dedication forward because with the account that we have, I'm not sure. <laughs> One day we met, they said, okay, let's face Faith Tabernacle and leave uh, Faith Academy. I said, which one do you have money for? You are just saying to God, look, we can handle Faith Tabernacle. We can add that one to it. He's not complaining. I yes, said, everybody carry on. Yes, we do Faith Tabernacle. I mean, we need a place for children. So carry on. I saw literal command of everyone's resources. I saw literal command. We didn't owe one person one time. We didn't visit anybody's home at any time, sir. Nobody was caught on phone any moment. No discussion with my wife. It's not our project, it's his project. He has more than enough to handle it. He obtained for us riches. You will experience that this time. Yeah. Your days of financial struggles are finally over. Yeah. Your days of begging for survival are finally over. Yeah. Somebody believe that. Let me hear your loudest amen. Yeah. Resurrection empowers us to work in dominion. And pass us to be in command. Raised us up, made us sit together with him in heavenly places, far above all principality, all powers, all dominion. <laughs> Some fellows gave a testimony, one person gave a testimony in Kaduna at the Full Gospel Businessman Fellowship. It was in the court. They came to Kaduna on a mission from their courts to scatter churches. And then they came to our church. After they have scattered one, two, three, they used that to test the ground. Then they came to our church and then tried to break forth. But there was a thorn, a canopy of thorns sitting over the church. Sitting what? They couldn't break through. They couldn't penetrate. So they met, retreated and said, look, what do we do? Hit the man. And they said, because when you sight the shepherd, they were quoting scriptures in their court. 
when you sell the shepherd, the sheep will scatter. So they came on a hunt for the man. But they say he was so far out in the cloud that we could not reach him. That's where you are seated. Amen. 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 That's where you are seated. Yes, sir. Far above. Now, that was 1986. I saw myself far above 1979. Mm. So they came late. They came, late. <laughs> they came what? They came late. They came late. You encounter this time will make your enemies come late. The devil and all his agents can't remove one ear. Anyway, there's no ear on my hair. Can't remove one ear of my hair. Praise God. Can't remove one. Not my finger. Why? I'm far above them. That's what they call dominion. Far above them. And that's the same place you are. Yes. All you need is to know it, understand it, yes. operate in the conscience of it, yes. and then you have committed God to keep confirming it. Yes. That's where you are. Yes. He has raised us up, not some fellows. Mm. All of us. All of us. And made us, not one person, not two, us. That's where you belong. And in the name of Jesus, Every harassment of the devil on your life comes finally to an end today. So that is putting together Ephesians 2, 5 and 6, and then Ephesians 1, 20 to 22. That's where you are. You have been repositioned for dominion by the power of his resurrection. So dominion is now your new identity. Finally, resurrection power swallows up death in victory. Swallows up what? It swallows up death in victory. First Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 45. Sorry, verse 55, please. 55. Oh, death, where is thy sting? Oh, grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and he took that away. The strength of sin is the law, he fulfilled it. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory over death through our Lord Jesus Christ. Come and say, I have victory over death. I have victory over death. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 2, verse 14 and 15, it says, For as much then as children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that he through death might destroy him that had, had, past tense, had the power of death that is the devil. The devil used to have the power of death. Jesus took it off from him. Hallelujah. Come and say, I'm free. From the fear of death. Jesus has got the key. Satan no longer have the key. And Jesus is holding that key in my favor. I am free. From the fear of death. Forever. Forever. Now look at verse 15 of it. He destroyed him that had the power of death and delivered them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bandage. They were all their lifetime subject to bandage. All their lifetime subject to bandage. All their lifetime. So if you remove the fear of death, all those native doctors will pack. You remove the fear of death. All those ritual killers will disappear. The, it's the fear of death that people go about to defend themselves against. Nothing else. 
Praise God. Amen. Nothing else. But as for you, what kills others will clear on their own from your territory. Yeah. Well, there are many more, but we stop here today. And I want to see his resurrection power keep decorating your life Amen. from henceforth. Amen. The beauty of the Lord your God shall be upon you. Amen. You never miss your step anymore. Amen. Lift up your right hand and give God thanks, everybody. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' precious name, we have given thanks. Very quickly this morning, you are here in this service because the resurrection power is only accessible by those who believe. You have to become a believer before you can become a partaker of that heavenly treasure called the resurrection power. So wherever you are this morning, you'd like me to pray with you to be born again, to be saved, to become a member of God's own household of faith and enjoy the blessedness of the resurrection power among others. And you want to secure eternity with Christ in heaven at the end of your journey, wherever you are, please stand to your feet and I'll be praying with you. God bless you. God bless you. Remain standing, please. Get up on your feet. You want to surrender your life to Christ today. You want to be born again. Please stand to your feet. God bless you. Many more are getting up. Wherever you are, stand to your feet. I'll be praying for you right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please remain standing. There are also people here today that need to rededicate their life to Christ. And recover themselves from wherever they have gone. From the Lord. Wherever you are, you want to rededicate your life to Christ, please stand to your feet. You want to rededicate your life to Christ, please stand to your feet. You want to rededicate your life to Christ, please stand to your feet. And God bless as you do. Amen. You cannot be restored until you return. You have to make a choice. You cannot be restored until you return. You want to dedicate your life to Christ, please stand up and join us before we pray. Right now, in the name of Jesus. Give the Lord a big clap offering everybody. All of us who are standing, please bow your heads for a moment. Just before we pray, please, ushers, can you make available this publication, Operation which is on the Lord's side, Prayer Banquet Card. The Lord spoke to me that I've chosen you and ordained that you go and bring forth fruit and fruit of life. That whatever you ask the Father in my name, He may give it to you. So you fill out this. And you bring it up on the 18th of April. The last day of this operation. Whatever is listed as your desire will be delivered for a testimony. For every engaging winner. Amen. God, we, we serve a covenant keeping God, not a Father Christmas God. Amen. If you won't repent, you can't be saved. Amen. But for every engaging winner, fill out here your desires. And then there will be a prophetic blessing on it. It will be delivered for a testimony. Amen. And that with speed. Amen. 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 He sent them to his vineyard to walk. And the same day, the evening of it, he called them and paid them their hire. He never withholds. So, list your desires here. You have a right to, from John 15, 16, List your desires here and Jesus will confirm them for testimonies. All of us who are standing, please bow your heads for prayers. Lift up your right hand to heaven and pray this prayer of faith after me. Lift up your right hand and say after me, Lord Jesus, I surrender my life to you today. Forgive me all my sins. Wash me with your blood. 
I believe you died for me. On the third day you rose again, that I may be justified. Right now, I believe my sins are now forgiven. I'm justified by your blood. I'm saved. I'm born again. I'm now a child of God. Right now, I accept you as my Lord and Savior. And I believe my sins are now forgiven. Thank you, Jesus, for saving my soul. Thank you, Jesus, for restoring me back to the faith. By your grace, I will serve you all the days of my life. Amen. Now, keep your hands up as I pray. Father, I pray over these precious souls. Your grace has brought them in today. Let the same grace preserve them. I cover each of you with the blood of Jesus. Remain covered against all satanic assaults in the name of Jesus. The grace that brought you in today will preserve you for life. In Jesus' name. And so shall it be. Give the Lord the biggest clap offering. Congratulations. Please fill out your cards and make sure they are submitted back to those church officials around with you. Good news. In final preparation towards the 40th anniversary, we'll be having taken advantage of tomorrow's public holiday, our central leadership summit here at Canaan Land. <laughs> Amen. All pastors, all cell ministers, assistants, and secretaries, all ordained workers. All service unit leaders will be gathered together tomorrow and all zone ministers to make arrangements for transportation that will be borne by the church. Amen. Amen. Please ensure you are a part.